than race. A full-spectrum conservative, Rick Santorum is rock-solid on values issues. A favorite of the Tea Party for fighting corruption and taxpayer abuse. More foreign policy credentials than any candidate. And Rick's Made in the USA jobs plan will make America an economic superpower again. A new poll just this week shows Santorum narrowly leading in Michigan. And he's about to get some serious attention from the Romney attack machine. Truth is, it's testing time for both Romney and Santorum. And a big, complicated, struggling state like Michigan makes for a fascinating battleground. Here to talk truth tonight, Ed Goaz. He's a Republican pollster. CNN senior analyst Ron Brownstein with the National Journal. And Penny Nance, the president of the conservative group Concerned Women for America. Um, so... Where's Mitt Romney from? Is he from Michigan? Is he from Massachusetts? It's important, but Michigan seems to be saying we're not so sure. Yeah, I think the people of Michigan being a more of a blue-collar state, there's a good number of evangelicals and Catholics there in Michigan. Um, they're going to have the choice between the Bain candidate, the Tiffany candidate, and the Walmart candidate. And I think that you're going to see uh, Rick Santorum do very well. The sweater vest, I think, will rock on. Sweater vest will rock on, you think. Now, you mentioned this. Let's look at this poll. If we look at the, the second poll graph that we have here, Republican Choice for Nominee, our new polling tonight, it shows what I'm going to call a little bit of class warfare within the Republican race. Among blue-collar voters, Santorum beats Governor Romney 36 percent to 25 percent. Ron Paul gets 20 percent there. Among those who say they're white-collar, it's Romney on top with 41, Santorum with 31. Ed, you do this for a living. Right. Uh, what is the divide in your party right now? What is the struggle? Is it about these well, men or is it about something else? No, it, it, it's, it's, you're in the first act of a play and you're trying to predict who the audience is going to be cheering for at the end of the play. We know who this audience is going to be cheering against at the end of the play and that's Barack Obama. And, and the way to kind of see whether there's a true divide there is to look at how Santorum and Romney does with these same groups when they go against Obama. In every survey you look at, there's not more than a percent or two difference between men and women, blue collar, white collar, of these voters voting against Obama and for either Santorum or Romney. Right, but while they may converge again against Obama, the Republican coalition, there's no question that within the context of the primary and this choice, you are seeing more of a class divide than we have typically seen in Republican races. This is a common feature in Democratic races. There's usually an upscale candidate and a downscale candidate, wine track and beer track. But in this race, Mitt Romney, as in 2008, but even more so this time, tilts very upscale in his support. He does better among upper income voters. He does better among college educated voters. And as Penny pointed out, Michigan is a state where in 2008, 57% of the Republican primary voters did not have a college education. The party is changing. It is much more of a blue collar party than it used to be. And that's one of the reasons why Romney has faced so much resistance. He's always struggled with those voters, and those struggles have generally gotten deeper this year. So you have a blue-collar, white-collar divide. You also have a gender gap if you look at the Republican race right now. If we show the numbers up there, among men, uh, Senator Santorum, 37 percent, Romney, 27 percent, Paul and Gingrich, both round out the pack, but a 10-point gap there. Then it's a total flip. Among women, uh, Romney leads, 38 percent to 29 percent. Why a gender gap in this race? Well, I think you saw in, in Iowa that Santorum did very well with women. I think the distortion of his record on women in hand to hand combat this past week, maybe showing up How in was there a numbers. distortion about his record? Well, he said he, he, was, he was asked a lot of questions about it. How well, was he it was, and what he said was what some women do struggle with, and, and particularly we struggle on behalf of women who are mothers. They join the military as single women, and they become mothers, and suddenly they're thrust to the front lines in, in certain combat positions that maybe they don't want to do. They have no choice in this matter, and so we have concerns over that and whether men and women, moms and dads at the same time, should be and their kids end up in foster care. So there are issues that women are concerned about, and I think that there was some distortion in his record. Look, I've known him for 20 years. He has had very impressive women in high-profile slots around him. He's mentored women. He's married to a very strong professional woman. He does not, in real life, have a woman problem. I think when that message no. gets out there, he'll do better. I, I think I want to disagree with both of you. I think if Rick Santorum is the nominee versus Mitt Romney as a nominee, I think you would see a very different performance among a particularly college-educated women who tend to be more socially liberal. I think Romney is a much stronger candidate for those voters than Santorum. Rick Santorum lost 72 percent of independents in his last race. You don't see numbers with seven very often in exit it's polls under any, year, under any circumstances. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, the, the, the strength of his social conservatism, which is a asset in this primary and will continue to be not only on, in Michigan but in other blue-collar leading states like Tennessee and Oklahoma on Super Tuesday, it, it, very different profile in the general election and I think one that comes out in your poll today, Republicans still overwhelmingly think Mitt Romney is a stronger bet to beat um, 
Barack Obama than Rick Santorum, but Santorum generates more enthusiasm in the base well, than Romney does. Which you have does. to have yeah. to win, by yeah. the way. Yeah. You yeah. need those, that enthusiasm to get the base out to do the work that it takes you to win elections. And again, I'm, I'm looking at data that shows Santorum versus Obama, Romney versus the Obama. Issue hasn't been less the, than the, the arguments have not been framed yet. And, 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 okay, and no, then, one's put, no one's put then you all of Santorum's social view on the traditional democratic strategy, which is we have to win women bigger than the Republicans yeah. are winning men. It's right. just not right. solely right. what women I agree. I agree. Right, but in the, in the primary context now, why the gender cafe? Well, I, first of all, I, I kind of disagree with the divide. I mean, you're looking at one survey that's showing this week there is, there is a nuanced difference in terms of leaning in that direction. Is that what's driving this election? No, that's not what's driving this election. If you look at Michigan, which is a good example, certainly if you look at Centorum, he has a very good message for blue collar. Uh, that's why you're seeing them running even in the polls in terms of Michigan. Romney has others that he will play in the state. That will be a major factor in this, in, in this upcoming state, but it's not a dividing factor because those people that will vote in that primary will vote for either of these candidates if they get the nomination. In November, you believe yeah. that. Let, let me ask each of you a question in closing. When you look, we're talking about Romney and Santorum because that's where the numbers say the race is right now. And when you look at Speaker Gingrich, he's down to 15 percent in the national horse race. If you look at the Michigan poll, he's running mm -hmm. third or fourth behind Congressman Paul. Uh, but we've also, and if you're Newt Gingrich, you're saying, okay, but I was at 40 a couple of months ago, and Herman Cain went from zero to 40. Uh, so you think this volatility could continue. Mm -hmm. Is that your likely course, volatility, or have we settled, as Santorum likes to say, into a two-man race? Well, I've heard others say that Newt Gingrich is the Michael Corleone of American politics. <laughs> Just when you think he's out, he's back mm. in. But it does look bad for him at this point. And I do sense that social conservatives are coalescing around Rick Santorum. At this point, can you survive a miserable February if you're Newt thinking, I'm going to get to Super Tuesday well, in the South? And there's two stories here. One is Newt is being set on the side of the road. Clearly, if you look at all the data, he is out of this game now. Second of all, there's been no debates. There's only one debate between now and Michigan and, and Arizona. There's another debate before Super Tuesday. He's running out of steam because the thing that had given steam to his campaign were the debates, and they're not there. Uh, at least you didn't say he was the Freddy Krueger. <laughs> but real quick on the volatility, in your CNN polling since January of 2011, you've had six different candidates in the lead overall, seven different candidates leading among Tea Party supporters. That's a level of volatility we've never seen, so it's hard to say we've seen the last turn of this wheel in this Still race. time to get in. And, and, Penny yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Rest, so. and, and I would add, the volatility came because right. of the debates. It's now right. become coming because right. of the caucuses. Also, because right. the Tea Party right. can't say i got to go here, Penny, Ron, and thanks for coming Thank in. You. It's a fascinating race. Fasten your seatbelt. Oprah Winfrey's the latest celebrity in trouble for her comments on Twitter, and now she's apologizing. Yeah. Plus, yes, it's Valentine's Day, not just here in Washington, but here in Washington, Republicans are, I'd say, rekindling their romance with President Obama. Go anyway.